Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan Silver. I'm a, a partner at uh, Maples Group in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm here today with Bing Chen, the President and Chief Executive Officer of C-SPAN Corporation. Uh, Bing, welcome. Thank you. So, um, perhaps turning to our, our first question, Bing, C-SPAN has gone through some fairly major changes mm -hmm. in the last two years. Um, could you tell us a little about that? Sure. Uh, you are absolutely right. <coughs> C-SPAN has went through a quite a profound changes over the past two years. Uh, there's a lot of changes within a you know, two-year period of time. Uh, we started from the governance, uh, where we strengthened the corporate governance, improved the transparency. Uh, we had a, um, you know, uh, strengthened the shareholder structure, uh, the new board, mm. the new management team. We also had uh, strengthened our, you, you know, the operations and also, uh, uh, you know, strengthen our balance sheet. Mm. Uh, specifically, uh, over the past uh, two years, um, you know, from a shareholder standpoint, we have, uh, you know, Fairfax as the renowned uh, global uh, long-term value investors. Uh, the, where they invested one billion U.S. dollars of last year, uh, that is on top of our existing funding shareholder of Washington companies uh, mm -hmm. since the very beginning until now. They remain fully committed uh, to uh, to be the uh, shareholders of a C-SPAN. Mm -hmm. So today, if you're looking at our shareholder base, where we have a you know a institutional investor, where is the Fairfax? Uh, financial service group and then we have uh, Washington companies which is entrepreneur mm. and also we have the general public and on the, on the board uh, front that uh, we have uh, you know David mr. Soko David Soko as our uh, chairman that has, has constructed a new board uh, from a management side since I started last year mm. uh, myself joined in the beginning of the year followed by the new CFO uh, CHRO and EVP of Ship Management. Um, on the on the on the financing side, uh, we have you know significantly uh, deleveraged the business. Uh, yeah. We have reduced uh, our debt uh, for about eight eight hundred million dollars over the past two years. Uh, we have improved our balance sheet flexibility. Uh, most recently, that uh, we announced the one point five billion U.S. dollar. Uh, portfolio financing that is a you know, creative uh, first in first in our industry uh, financing that mm -hmm. gives us the flexibility lower cost of, of uh, financing and also as, as streamline the administratives of the of the uh, you know administrative the uh, the financing in terms of covenants mm -hmm. on a growth side uh, this is also very important because uh, uh, c-span uh, you know not only to, uh, has been uh, industry leader but also over the past two years, we've been continuing to grow in the business. Uh, at, the, at the beginning of last year, we acquired a GCI, GCI, which yep. is a $1.6 billion uh, dollar portfolio with uh, uh, you know, the 16 uh, vessels is over 10,000 TU. Mm. Uh, this year, uh, most recently, uh, in addition to the, uh, the, the 9,600 TU vessels which we acquired, uh, in September. Uh, last week we announced that we had acquired uh, six vessels uh, which is um, yeah, which is uh, around 10,000 TEU each. Yeah. So uh, with the delivery of these uh, you know seven vessels uh, C-SPAN will have a total capacity of uh, one point uh, close to 975,000 TEU right. uh, which is you know continue to be the the largest independent owner and operator in that space. Mm. Uh, in terms of a capital allocation, and that's another thing that is we are very proud in terms of what the changes we have been making. Um, you, you know, in, 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 uh, in this industry, I think we have been able to install the discipline mm. and enable to allow us to, you know, invest in looking at, um, you know, what is the, uh, the best in terms of the you know return for the business on a risk adjusted basis yeah. um, it is important that when we making any kind of uh, you know capital allocation that we're looking at 
the an, uh, accretion to the business, looking at the impact of our balance sheet, and also look at the customer needs as well as the business rationale. And if we're looking at what we have done over the past two years with these changes, uh, we are not making changes for the for the changes, but rather we're making the changes in enable to, uh, allows us to be able to install those competencies in the business where we have been focusing on you know executing. We have been focusing on developing those competencies in operational excellence, customer partnership, uh, financial uh, strength, uh, you know the the quality growth as well as the optimal uh, capital allocation mm. and with these you know changes and with these competences that allows uh, c-span really be able to deliver the results qu quarter after quarter yeah. and uh, this is actually is the foundation for us to continue to not only to manage in our business but also being able to continue to grow our business and that is why we are very excited um, you know it is the right time and mm. also it's an exciting time for us to be able to you know continue to you know to, to, to install and leverage on these competencies that we have developed over the past two years and being able to apply to our existing business as well as to the you know the, the, the new business that we're going to grow into yeah okay thank you very much and then perhaps if you could tell us what makes C-SPAN's business model as an owner and operator unique? Yeah, that's a great question. I think C-SPAN is unique in the sense, first of all, just purely looking at well, who is C-SPAN. C-SPAN today is the largest owner operator uh, in, a, in our sector. Uh, not only that we own 119 vessels, but mm -hmm. also we operate them. Yeah. And we actually, uh, as the owner and operator today, that we have an integrated platform. And this platform ranging from you know, vessel design, construction, uh, financing, operation, commercial, all the way to scrapping. So it's yeah. a full asset life cycle management where C-SPAN today have such a system, process and people that yeah. is in place to, to, to manage this. But also, uh, most importantly, that our business model is unique is in a way that if you're looking at C-SPAN today, uh, we have um, you know, a, a very predictable business model in mm -hmm. the sense that we are engaged in a long-term contract. Long-term contract in the sense that right now we have over uh, roughly about uh, 4.5 billion US dollars of contracted revenue. Right. Um, our business uh, in general, 80% of our business are in a long-term uh, contract yeah. with our customer. So that way it will, you know, uh, provide the predictability of our, of our business. Mm -hmm. At the same time, also will be able to you know isolate us from the you know short-term market vol volatility, yeah. and that is that's this is the one part of that you know it's very special because you know on one hand we do uh, have a proprietary view of the you know market mm. and the industry, but on the other hand that we do not speculate. Uh, that's one thing that is very different. Mm. Uh, we are rather focusing on operations and providing the best services mm. to our customer. Mm. Okay, and you know what the, the the other part is is that um, it, it, the we continue to be able to provide a kind of uh, financial strength where today uh, we are very proud. To 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 to, um, uh, to 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 be in a position where that we have all the financial flexibility, where we are able to execute, uh, to 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 um, you know to to take the opportunities whenever we see as appropriate, mm. versus that uh, a lot of times that I think as as you might see in that in the industry that a lot of that there's a limited financing yeah. that is available. So if we're looking at today, C-SPAN, you know. Primarily, we're looking at our customers. That's another thing. Uh, the customers, we are dealing with the top seven out of eight customers. Mm. These are the customers accounts for about 85% of the market. So these are our core customers. Yeah. On the operational side, uh, C-SPAN today has uh, you, you know, the one of the best operational uh, standards and, and quality uh, if we're looking at our operational cost uh, ownership per day mm. over the past uh, you know quarter for example that we have further reduced our uh, opex by two hundred dollars to five thousand seven hundred 
seventy dollars per day.、Mm. We have achieved lowest in history in terms of LTIF,、uh, you know, in terms of safety standard.、Yeah. We've been able to,、uh, you know, on a on a customer side, on an operational side, and also on a on a、uh, you know the the the, the quality of、uh, of capital allocation, as we said it before.、Mm-hmm. If we're looking at the acquisitions that we have made,、um, so from from the customer, from the operations, from the financing,、uh, from the capital allocation,、mm-hmm. from these perspective,、uh, C-SPAN has been、uh, very much focused, and because of these. Focuses and and、uh, our、uh, capability in these respective areas that we were able to achieve、uh, results、uh, quarter after quarter. Yeah, okay, that's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you.、Um, could you tell us a little about the company's growth? Where do you see the company's growth and development in the next two to five years?、Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the growth is actually. It's very important in terms of、uh, sustainable growth.、Mm-hmm. Uh, we are focusing on、uh, the quality of growth, rather is the growth for the sake of growth, and that's what we have been uh, uh, repeatedly uh, uh, shared with the with the market.、Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for growth, wh- whether it's within the container space or outside or in adjacent sector. But for us, what we see, the growth has to be sustainable. What do you mean by sustainable? Is is that When you taking on a business, when you taking on the assets, that you need to be able to have the ability to manage, control, and grow that business further. And this is what I've been talking about in terms of the changes that we have made over the past two years, and also the uniqueness today, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of、uh, the, the 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 competencies in areas of operational excellence,、uh, customer partnership,、yeah. uh, the financial strength. The、um, you know the the quality growth and also the optimal capital allocation, these are the competencies which、uh, today I'm very pleased to say that the C-SPAN has developed such a core competencies. With these competencies and in the areas from the customer operation to finance,、mm. we are very well positioned、uh, to be able to grow our business both. Within the、uh, container shipping space, as well as in the adjacent shipping, as well as in other growth areas,、mm. and specifically, you know, first of all, in the in the container ship space, which is our core business, as we announced last week, where、um, we acquired、uh, six vessels,、yeah. and that's one of、uh, y- y- you know opportunities we see that fits those investment criteria.、Yeah. At the same time, we continue also to evaluate the opportunities. Uh, which is another dimension of the growth,、yeah. where it's in the adjacent area. For example, we、uh, earlier this year we announced the、uh, framework agreement with uh, uh, China Shipping Energy,、uh, which we explore looking like, at tanker business,、yeah. and also we are looking at、uh, any other business which provides that type of、uh, you know quality. And risk-adjust returns,、mm. uh, and being able to you know leverage our core competencies in being able to you know、uh, create the value、uh, going forward.、Yeah. So therefore, you know, for us, we as as I mentioned earlier,、uh, we continue to uh, uh, to look at the growth opportunities in container shipping adjacent and beyond. Um, and、uh, we, however, we are extremely disciplined,、mm. and we are also,、uh, uh, you know, very focused on the quality of those growths in terms of meeting those investment criteria.、Um, and and I believe that with what has been,、uh, you know, going on, I think that the opportunities we are quite confident、uh, that we see,、uh, you, you know, the opportunities across these areas. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And could you give us some insight into the state of the the container shipping business at the moment, and where where you see that going in the next five years or so? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah,、uh, the state of the container shipping, I I would think that is going to continue to grow、mm-hmm. in general,、uh, because as we know that、uh, container shipping、uh, industry is a integral. Part infrastructure of the global trade.、Mm. Uh, we know about ninety percent 
of the global trade is carried out by through the seas. Mm. And uh, if we're looking at the container shipping growth from the uh, you know last 20 years, I think has been actually more than doubled, mm. uh, with the CAC of uh, more than six uh, percent right. uh, annually. Mm. And uh, one of the things I always say, even during the financial crisis. Uh, the uh, container shipping in 2008, container shipping, uh, the, the, the demand of volumes was still growing, mm. uh, while the rest of the world is, is it's, uh, actually in a, in a recession. Mm. So from a, from a macro standpoint, uh, we see that um, you know, the, the, this is an integral part and it will continue to, to grow. The second part is, is that um, you, you know, we see the uh, container shipping, it will continue to grow from you know, the global trade. Mm. Uh, as, as, as long as the global trade continue to grow, and the, I think the demand will continue to grow as well. If specifically we're looking at from a demand and supply side, on the demand side, um, you know, we, we're looking at is the, um, from, a, from a global standpoint, that uh, over the last 10 years, for example, the container sh containerization and also the global trade has grown in a way that still have a 4% of the CAC in terms of the growth. Yeah. If we're looking at from a um, you know, trade route perspective, um, the main lane growth was still robust, yeah. uh, despite the fact that we have this uh, you know, trade war mm. that is ongoing. And specifically, if we're looking at um, you know, the Far East to Europe, um, and I think that's still grown at about four yeah. percent. If we're looking at um, the, uh, the 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 uh, Indian subcontinent to Middle East, those are the although it's not the main lane, but their growth is quite uh, robust, yeah. and also the intra Asia. So there's a lot of uh, growth uh, that is, I think, uh, just from the trade route perspective. And the other part is, is also from the GDP growth. Uh, mm. As long as we see the GDP growth, and, and historically, uh, container shipping has been a multiple of the GDP growth. Yeah. So from a demand side, we still see the growth maybe not as um, you know, as 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 uh, fast as what uh, used to be, mm. but we still see that is uh, you know they are drivers for the growth. Yep. From the supply side, uh, we see that uh, obviously the uh, if we're looking at the new build uh, to the to the fleet ratio, mm. uh, this is actually at a historic low. Right. Uh, in a sense that right now it's about 10.7%. With 10.7% average vessels built over three years, so annually it's about 3% of mm. the growth. Mm. Uh, so that is, uh, it, it's, it's a healthy, uh, it's actually uh, close to record low, yeah. uh, the, the new build ratio. And the other part is, is if we're looking at the idle uh, rate. Mm. From the idle rate uh, right now it's about 3.3%. 3, 3 with 3.3%, um, you know, this is uh, one of the significant uh, improvement year over year. Mm. If you're looking at the idle rate, yeah. and then the other the other indicators you can look at is the uh, the, the number of the vessels being scrapped, mm. and that is actually for 2018 is relatively low because the rate has went up. But we would see that from uh, 2000. 20 as the new uh, IMO 2020 comes into the place uh, with the fuel efficiencies mm. and then we'll be seeing the increase in number of uh, uh, the scrapping. Yeah. So in general, uh, we see the demand and the supply uh, is, is developing more towards the you know, balanced direction. Yeah. And uh, from again, from a C-SPAN's perspective, actually we are very uh, you know, pleased in the way that uh, our business model, as we, uh, as we uh, you know, uh, outlined earlier, because we have a long-term contract in principle, so therefore we are not really subject to the short-term volatilities of the market. Yeah. So you know, I think it, 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 in general um, we are we are very optimistic about the uh, the, the the sector's uh, perspective, uh, particularly as we also seen that from the liners' perspective that they actually consolidated rather quickly over the past two or three years, mm. from thirty some liners now today to seven to eight liner liners that accounts for eighty five percent of the market share. Yeah. But in our space, as the ship owner and operator. Uh, we're really seeing a still very significantly fragmented market mm. uh, in the sense that C-SPAN as we yeah, as we stand in today being the largest in the space but we only account for 8% of the market yeah. 
and I would encourage uh, you and, and our uh, colleagues, uh, peers, uh, to uh, follow up yep. on our presentations, That's announcement, cool. um, and uh, you know we are very excited about the uh, the prospects, uh, both in terms of the industry and also for C-SPAN. Okay. Bing, thank you very much. That's very insightful and very informative. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.